What's going on, family? Hope everybody's doing well on this Friday, man. I uh, hope you had a very productive week, man. I hope things went well for you. Really, I do. You know, I mean that. And I mean it in the most positive way. But now on another note, man, I want to share something with y'all. Um, and it kind of was unsettling to me, man. I was uh, checking my YouTube account, man. And I got a, a comment on, on one of my videos. Now, this particular video had to do with a young man who decided that he was going to delete himself and delete his two-year-old daughter. Uh, and I know I know just by here and there, I know what you're thinking. This is this got to be a, a, a guy who had lost his mind. And I agree. I do. I agree. But now the comment was to the effect that I was defending the man. Now, if you go back and watch that video, man, uh, you'll see that I'm, I try to be uh, very balanced and objective with the way that I present things. Uh, in this instance, there is absolutely no excuse, no excuse to take the life of Khalees. There's none that can be uh, a supply that would be sufficient for me. And then to be honest with you, uh, the taking of his daughter's life was a cowardly act on Mr. Parks' part. Cowardly. Uh, because as was mentioned in the video, as men, our responsibility is to provide and to protect, especially for our children. And the reason why I am so adamant about that is because they are innocent. And they're innocent in any way that you can think. They didn't ask to be here. We made arrangements for them to be present on this planet. And so it's necessary for us to take on the responsibility that's involved in making sure that they grow up to be healthy and happy individuals. That's our responsibility as parents. So no, there's no excuse that can be made. Uh, and I'm not trying to, but at the same time, there is a, a amount of accountability that has to be seen on both sides. Now, why do I say that? In the video, you notice that uh, Ms. Brewer said, or Mrs. Brewer's mother, pardon me, said that it came out of the blue, this particular instance, right? But now, upon doing some further research, right, let me share some things with you about Mr. Parks. And this is not to castigate Mr. Parks, this is just the facts. Uh, it mentions that uh, Mr. Parks had been guilty of uh, several violent crimes. Uh, one of the things that it talked about was that uh, he uh, had some uh, gun charges that he was on parole for, but then also uh, he had some instances in the past with domestic violence. Uh, he was paroled in 2012 on armed robbery conviction. So already we see that Mr. Parks has an issue with violence. Now, whether or not Mr. Parks... Uh, I was making strides to change his life or not, we don't know, but we do know that that's his past. And the reason why I say we're not using it to castigate or to tear uh, Mr. Park's uh, reputation apart, we're looking at what could have led to this heinous action. Uh, but you see, in this particular instance, I would be hard pressed uh, to put all of the blame on, on Mr. Park because I'm sure that Ms. Brewer was aware of Mr. Parks' history. And if she isn't or wasn't, uh, then that's something that she needs to be accountable for. Because now you have decided to lay down and reproduce with a man who has a history of violence. And you might be saying to yourself, well, you can't necessarily judge someone off their past. You can't uh, say that this is who he is as a man because of the fact that this is what he was involved in in the past, and I agree with you, but it is a good indication. It's a good indication. And then uh, the very fact that she had to go and get a paternity test to prove that her daughter belonged to uh, Mr. Parks, it underscores another fact. Young ladies, please stop procreating with these gentlemen who don't think enough of you to give you their last name. Do you understand what I mean? 
if a man is not willing to take on the responsibility of marrying you and caring for you why would you procreate why would you have a child why would you have sex why would you lie down with an individual who is not in a position to take care of you let long children that's why i say there's a fair amount of accountability on both sides yes mr Parks was wrong there is no excuse there can be a supply that will satisfy me in regards to his actions but also mrs brewer should have been aware of what she was getting herself into she should have been aware of who she was dealing with she should have been more uh, conscious of the decisions that she was making in regards to who the father of her child was going to be we can't deny that fact y'all we can't uh, someone who has been on parole for armed robbery and domestic violence do you think that this particular person uh, would be in a position where they would be a good father do you think that they would be in a position where they could take on the responsibilities of being a husband and a father and carry them out successfully because now it makes no mention it makes no mention in this article of any help that mr parks has received yes he's been in prison but uh, a lot of times uh, those individuals don't receive the help that they need and a lot of times they become repeat offenders but here uh, we don't see any record of mr paul getting any kind of therapy any kind of help for the traumas that uh, he has gone through we know he's, he's traumatized we know there has to be some mental issues that are there and uh like uh miss brewer's mother mentioned though this this kind of evil this kind of evil is something that cannot be excused but in the midst of all of these difficulties i'm going to emphasize this point again because if i don't emphasize this point again i won't be doing this story justice please be careful with who you decide to have a child with because now as i mentioned these children they didn't ask to be here we made arrangements for them to come here and because of that it's our responsibility to make sure that whoever it is that we decide to have children with these individuals are ready they're ready if you have to take a paternity test to prove to this man that this is your child then you have done it the wrong way you've done it the wrong way because if the two of you all were married and in a stable relationship then there would be no question as to who the father or who the mother of the child is and i do that man for because i don't want any one party to shoulder all of the blame right i think that's the way to go that's the way to do things i said but now in this particular instance uh, the reason why i had to uh, give some of the blame to the mother is because this individual the man who is the father of her child uh, he was a known uh, he, was, he was a known fella the man had been involved in all kinds of things he'd been in prison before you know uh, domestic violence uh, he had gun charges all kinds of things right and this is the person that you choose to lay down and produce a child with right so if you, you have to bear some of the blame for that because if if she didn't want that man to to you know produce a child with her there are things that she could have done that would you know would have prevented that so you know that's that's part of accountability there but then at the same time uh this brother if he knew he wasn't ready for this kind of life then he should have been refraining from having sex with this girl he shouldn't have been doing it uh, and i think that's why i say blame on both sides you know you got you got individuals who comment on things and it's slanted the only thing they can see is their point of view right they can't see any other person's point of view and that lets you know man that uh, the person already had preconceived notions they already have them and if they already have preconceived notions then why are we why are we in a situation where we take what they say and, and we bank on that no you need to be looking for an opinion that's objective man as objective as you can possibly get it because it's always uh well, actually three sides to the story i was about to say two is his side her side is the truth 
So you need to be able to get both sides so that you can put two and two together, man, and come out with the right conclusion. But at any rate, what actually got me started, man, what kind of wound me up a little bit is that uh, this lady used this opportunity. She used this opportunity to categorize all black men. Now, you know, you know, from, from just looking at me and my videos for five minutes, you know that that's not something I'm going, I'm not going to agree to that. I'm not. I think that's ridiculous. But she, she's not going to categorize all black men. Even she made a statement. She said that she had never, listen to this now, never met a black man that was good. She never met one. So you mean tell me that in all your time on being on this earth, you, you hadn't found one black man that, that meets your criteria? Or, or is it that you would rather expose yourself to the elements in our community that are not so favorable? So my, my rebuttal to her was this. I said, okay, uh, in response to her not being able to find a good black man, I told her, I said, well, the thing about it is, are you putting yourself in a position where you can find them? Are you picking the way that you should? I say, so one of two things is absolutely wrong. One of two things you have a problem with. Either you're not picking correctly or there has to be some difficulty with you. Because think about it. You hadn't run into a uncle or a grandfather or even a brother. You hadn't run into a teacher, a coach. You hadn't run into any black man that was positive and doing the things that he needed to do. You hadn't run into any. Now, one, two things has happened in this situation, right? One, two things has happened. Uh, either she has become so jaded that she can't see that, that, that the difficulty is with her or uh, some of the things that she had experienced in life. And maybe she, you know, had a difficult upbringing. Let me be more to the point. Maybe her father was not around, right? And maybe that's the reason why she can make that statement so freely that she has never met a good black man. She's never met one. I thought that was absolute rubbish. I did. I thought it was absolute rubbish. And then when I went on to explain to her uh, why I felt the way that I did, then of course here, here comes the here comes the belittling and the name calling. Uh, I, I simply just read the situation as I thought it was. Um, she doesn't like any black men for whatever reason it may be but here's the thing man here's the thing when you introduce hatred into your life okay when you introduce hatred into your life it has a tendency to spill on to other things now your hatred may be directed at a particular party or even a particular person but that hatred has a tendency to spill over onto other things and so when you involve that that element in your life and the way that you interact with people, what's going to happen is you're going to be in a situation where your interaction is not going to be beneficial. It's not going to be helpful for the people around you, and it's not going to help you. If anything, it's going to alienate you from, from people because you have that element within you. Uh, and it was clear to me, I looked at some of the video that she had posted on YouTube and throughout the whole video, the one video that I looked at, uh, there was nothing but dispersion cast on black men. Nothing but. The only thing that, that she could offer was negative commentary. Not one word about uh, accountability on the side of the mother of this child who was killed, you know, she didn't go into anything that the woman could have possibly done. It was all on the man. And she made that clear to me in the comment. She said, oh, this is, is because of a black man. And she's convinced herself that that's what black men do. That's what black men do. And of course, like I said, you know, I took issue with that. I took issue, but because every day I get up, every day, I get up to make sure uh, that everyone around me has the things that they need. And I think I'm 
especially sick of this narrative because there is no stereotype that exists that fits the whole group. No stereotype. You can't find a stereotype that's forced upon any group that applies to everyone in that group. So if you are here and you, you are having difficulties with one black man, right? That doesn't mean you're gonna have difficulties with all black men. Or, or maybe one black man was unfaithful to you. That doesn't mean all black men are unfaithful to you. That's not what that means. What that means is, uh, in this particular situation, uh, you just uh, maybe pick wrong, or maybe the individual painted himself to be something that he was not. Either way, you cannot stereotype a whole group of people based upon one difficulty that you had with one person.